Hi, hi, Bonnie. Hi, Sai, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, good to be here. Happy to be on your channel. Thank you, thank you for accepting my invitation and accepting to be on my show. Absolutely. Well, I had to go stalk your channel first and see, but it was pretty cool. I like the, the interviews that you're doing. Thank you, and uh, thanks for being the part. It's my pleasure. So I thought to tell about the work uh, you are doing and uh, about yourself to my audience. So can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Sure. So I'm Bonnie Brennan. I'm an Angular GDE. Uh, I started out as a developer and I started getting more and more into the Angular community, which I love. The Angular community is just very warm. And, you know, I think because Angular is a little complicated and so uh, we just all have to kind of work together to try to figure it out. Uh, so I was doing uh, consulting for a while. I started getting into big into Angular <clears throat> and I was doing a lot of enterprise consulting with large companies. And I was also traveling a lot at conferences. Remember before the coronavirus, <laughs> I, uh, I was traveling a lot. And then, uh, but I really started to see more and more. I was frustrated and not that I was frustrated, but I saw like, I think the reason why I started speaking at conferences is because it's very expensive to go to technical conferences. And the first one I paid for on my own, but after that, like it gets expensive to go. Uh, and I saw there were a lot of people like we, we had such a great time networking at conferences and I built a lot of like my professional network of people that I met that led to opportunities and jobs and people helping me with my code. And that all came from going to conferences, right? That was such a great opportunity, but so many people can't. Either they can't go to conferences at all or they can't go to conferences very often. And so uh, I actually left consulting and started Angular Nation just to kind of bridge that gap and let people like, you know, collaborate and talk and kind of have that friendship. Um, basically like Stack Overflow, but nicer. That's what I was kind of going for. Uh, so I've been doing that for a while. And I, the other thing that I found when I was uh, consulting was I don't know how much you know about Angular, but Angular is very like it's it's it works very well in large companies. Right. Uh, and it's very powerful. However, I found a lot of people abusing Angular like they don't really know it very well, but they just kind of start using it and they learn it as they go. And then the problem is they end up with like 20,000 lines of eh, kind of crappy code. Right. And so I wanted to and I was trying to help them work through that, but I really wanted to kind of get to them before the code was written and not come and refactor all of that messy code. But I really wanted to teach people more like how to write it clean and keep it clean from the very beginning so that you don't end up calling in an expert GDE for help after it's already done. So that's why I left uh, consulting and I started doing training and I made an architect course. And so I've been kind of going off in that. Uh, and it's been, it's been really amazing. Um, it's crazy because I don't know if you, if there was a documentary on Netflix, um, so now I'm telling you the whole story, so I, uh, Have you ever seen, uh, uh, there's a documentary called, um, I don't remember the name of it. Anyway, anyway, it's basically about social media and these harmful algorithms that have, and like there's propaganda and there's like political manipulation and all this stuff going on. And so Twitter and YouTube and our, there's like this doom scrolling. There's a lot of negativity on social media and it's gotten pretty bad over the world, right? As I'm sure you know. Um, and I found that it's really hard and you might find this also, it's kind of hard to interact with people on YouTube, right? Like they can watch us, but we can't, but they can't like be involved in the conversation. And so this is why on Angular Nation, like I really encourage everybody to come in. We have a lot of community events where everybody turns their cameras on and it's kind of hard because I think everyone's introverted, uh, because this whole pandemic is like, everyone's a little traumatized at this point. So people are very shy, but it's really nice to have created an environment where introverts feel comfortable turning their cameras on and asking questions and asking for help. And people like since we've been now up for two years, I'm amazed at how sweet people are and how, because there's trolls on Twitter and YouTube and like on social media, people are kind of mean on the internet, you know, people are mean, but when we get them uh, into this small community and they turn their cameras on and kind of talk about code, like people have been so nice and, it's been really exciting. We've had people get hired um, and people, you know, get, you know, new collaborations and it's, it's going very well. So that's what I'm working on. So uh, you shifted from uh, consulting to training. 
Yes. Yes. Which was hard because I was making a lot of money in consulting and there's not as much money in training. There is like after a while, if you have a lot of curriculum, but, you know, trying to switch over and start, you know, building. So basically what I did when I started, um, because I did start to sit down and like, what do you need to know about Angular? Right. But I found myself copying so much stuff that was already out there. And also I did a course uh, a couple of years ago in Houston it was a week long, like Angular, you know, masterclass, comprehensive. Um, it's really difficult to learn that much in like so much, right? So what I did instead and what I did when I was consulting, I would do with my own developers. So I was working with a lot of junior developers and training my own team. And rather than trying to teach them everything, I would just like teach them the most important things. Like, don't ever do this because I did this. and It was really bad, right? I just teach them the most important things and then really encourage them to come and ask me questions. Because if I have that relationship as a teacher and like if they can come to me or like if, as a boss, as a trainer, as a teacher, whatever, it's so much easier for me to say, Sai, just tell me what your questions are and let's talk about that instead of me trying to teach you everything. Right. So I really try to focus. Um, so I what I did was in those years of enterprise work that I because I was working with really big companies. So I took the this is the thing, Sai they're all making the same mistakes. This is what I found. This is what it was like, oh my goodness, like this team and then I go to another team and I get them all sorted out and I go to another team and they screwed up the same way that the last team did. And so that's where I was like, okay, so I focus on the most important things that people are doing wrong that I'm finding over and over again. And not everything, like I don't really care about the lint rules, but it's like the things that are really hurting the enterprise teams that they're actually having to go back and, re and fix all this stuff because they you know, did it wrong. That's really what we focus on. Um, is so, so I'm just saying like I'm teaching them the most important things to have stable code and then we have office hours and I just sit there and say ask me questions and I just answer their questions and it's just such a better use of their time rather than me trying to force like everything in their brain because there's so much out there already that if I just say this is what you need to know this is the most important mistakes that people are making in enterprise the big teams are struggling with this and then also, what are you struggling with? And we talk about that. And it works really well. I love it. So how Angular is creating impact on IT? Say it again. Uh, how uh, Angular is uh, crea uh, creating impact in IT? Well, um, that's a good question. I think that... Uh, well, here's the thing. If we take a step back, right, and I don't think it's Angular specifically, but what I see that's really common from, because I just do so much with, because I'm extroverted, right? So I talk to a lot of people uh, and the Angular community is struggling with something, but I don't think it's unique to Angular. I think there's some, you know, everybody, every community struggles with things. Um, but the real big thing that I see over and over again is um, that as these apps grow, that this, the apps get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that in itself actually becomes the problem. A lot of teams are struggling with just it's everything's getting big, right? So we have mono repos and we have microservices and we have, and they all have pros and cons and like how we have cloud, we have, do we, do we distribute everything? Do we put it all in one place? Like all of, and, and the problem is that when you have so much code, all of it has problems, right? If you put it all in one place, there's a problem. If you distribute it, there's a problem. And so no matter what you do, it's going to be challenging just because it's getting so big. Like, and I'm, I'm sure, as you know, because you're in IT too, right? The database, we've had, like, I love GraphQL. I don't know if you use GraphQL, but I love GraphQL. And this is where GraphQL came from because people have these massive databases and then it's old and we want to have more modern functionality, but it's like, just the fact that you have so much code that was so expensive to write, and then what are you going to do? You, you start over, it's hard, right? So that's something that I think everyone's struggling with, especially Angular, not because of anything specific to Angular, but because Angular really goes well with large projects to begin with. And so we're already in that space, that enterprise space where we've got massive, massive problems. So that's really what we try to address. Um, I work a lot. I, I try to simplify things in my training to um, just really make things easy to understand. We use a lot of visuals and just break things down and make it, you know, smaller word because a lot of people like introduce big words that we don't know. And it makes it so overwhelming that I've, I've been in training before where I get out of it and I just feel stupid. Like I didn't understand any of that, but then I go to another teacher and learn the same thing and it clicks in my brain and it makes perfect sense. So I want to be that, you know, 
so yeah, so we focus on the most important things, which is basically it gets really big. And and I think a lot of people, I know the Angular team and there are other teams that are um, working on like how do we break these pieces and how do we how do we have tools that help us you know manage these like uh, there's bit there's a couple of other ways where you know like kind of we're taking like the gulp grunt web pack to the next level and trying to bundle it in smaller pieces uh, what I'm seeing is that there are a lot of solutions popping up so I don't know what's going to happen but there are a lot of companies that are looking at this problem and this is something that I see is going to be a big thing I think and is how are we going to take this because not only do we have to take this bundle and break it up into smaller pieces, but we have to have version control and, and dependencies and all this. It's, just, it's complicated. Job security. <laughs> so uh, as a trainer, I'm sure uh, you'll be uh, seeing a lot of people who are coming to you without having uh, any uh, technical background and uh, wants to learn. So how you'll teach them, how you'll train them, how you'll guide them? That's a good question. Uh, so I think really for me, the biggest thing, and it was, it was actually difficult for me to learn in the beginning because, you know, I was a single mom and I, and I didn't start developing until I was like 30, 35, something like that. Um, so before that I didn't have any money. <laughs> I was working really hard full time, but I just didn't make very good money. Right. So I was broke all the time. And once I started writing code and I, and I was like, oh, I can make way more money. And I was so excited. Like suddenly I can, I can afford a nicer car. Right. So I had friends that also didn't have any money because we're a bunch of single moms. And, and so I was trying to teach my friends and I had some people in my family and I was so excited to teach them. Like I got, I'm I, like, I'm making more money now than I ever made because of this programming thing. And I just wanted to share it with everybody. What I found, which was frustrating and confusing for me for a while is um, not everybody is going to do that work. A lot of people wanted me to teach them, but like I would give them a book that I found very helpful, but they wouldn't read it. Right. And so what I found really, unfortunately, very consistently is I can't teach anybody unless they're excited to learn. But when so, and this is why like sometimes training is hard because if somebody says, go train my team and I go to the team and I train them, they're not paying attention. They don't really care. They're getting paid to be there. Right. But if I have somebody else who's like, Hey, I need to learn this because it's a great opportunity. And they're and then they come. There was one Natty. Natty, if you're watching this, I love you. Natty showed up for every office hours with a list of questions. And she's like, I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but I have a lot of questions. Okay, it's my turn. Okay, ready? And she's just like every single question, question, question. And and it's that shameless, you know, I want to learn all of it and I want to ask and I want to and and to be able to say, like, explain it to me until I understand. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people don't know how to do that or don't feel comfortable doing that. And I think that's part of my job is to make them feel comfortable and to make them say, it's okay to ask me better. We actually have a beginner's channel. Um, I'm doing a talk there next week, by the way. Um, that's a free channel where people can, because that's the thing is I really think that it's not really about so much what we're teaching. It's about that comfort level of, I don't want you to feel stupid asking me a question. So ask, and, and, and it's having other people ask questions and we have some experts um, who are like Sonder is one of our big experts. He's so patient and he will give the same respect to beginner questions as he does to advanced questions. And he'll explain it to them. Even, I mean, that's just beautiful. So I think that really helps more than, you know, it's just that support. Like we're here for each other and we don't understand all of it either. I think that's the, that's a part. That's really what I've found that I didn't know we were going to find that. I didn't know that we were going to make so many friends in Angular Nation. I didn't know that we would have like regulars and we all know each other. And it's it's been really fun. So how much time it takes uh, for any person to understand Angular? Well, um, this is why I started the uh, the training course that I did, because I wanted to focus on the most important things. I think that you could go through it. Assuming that you had some programming experience, especially if you already have a little bit of JavaScript, TypeScript, or you know HTML, CSS, and you kind of know a little bit about that. Um, if you were coming from React or Vue, I think it would be a little bit easier because you kind of have that dynamic mindset. Um, I would say if you, especially with the training, because I'm like trying to show them the most important things that like, if you do this, your code's gonna be, it'll, this is the thing, Sai. If you don't have any training with Angular, and you start writing code and you don't know what you're doing and you just kind of fake it the first day, right? 
here's the thing that I found that's kind of dangerous. You can get the code working, right? It works. And then as you build it more and more and more, um, if you're just kind of, you don't really have an architect, you don't really have any training and you're just kind of Googling it as you go along, which so many of us do. That's what I did spent my whole career doing, right? We're just figuring it out. That's what we do. Um, but the problem is without that training, uh, what we found, what I found very consistently, like I said, which is why I left and started um, training is because as the app gets bigger and bigger, it gets slower and slower every single time, every single time, because if they're writing kind of sloppy code, the features still work and the UI looks fine. But the code, when the code is messy and, and brittle, then the problem is that those problems don't really show themselves until like two years later, right? Or, or like if you have somebody who knows the code, what, what it should look like, you can, I can look at it and go, oh my goodness, this is wrong. But how do they know that? I didn't know that until I had been doing it for five years and I had so much enterprise experience to see the same thing over and over again that now when I see it, I'm like, ah, don't do that. Like it's very quick for me. But as a beginner, it's so confusing. Um, so that's really why I really, rather than trying to teach them everything, because there's so much, there's so much functionality in Angular. There's so many ways that we can deep dive over here. We can talk about the compiler. We can talk about testing. We can talk about so many. We can talk about RxJS all day long, right? But this is why my, my focus, I think, is just creating a place, creating a, a place for these conversations to happen and have these supportive people who are there to help. And then it's just been beautiful. So what are the what are the qualities uh, that uh, any uh, trainee need to have in order to understand Angular better? A trainee? Oh, you got to be stubborn. You got to be stubborn. You have to have a positive attitude because sometimes people get frustrated and they get mad. If you get frustrated and you get mad, that's not helping, right? Um, I I mean, not that I don't get mad when I get frustrated, but sometimes you have to take a break and come back, right? And this is the difference if because Sometimes it's just, it's confusing. People, when they when they get overwhelmed, when they're learning something new, it's very often, it's very common, we feel stupid, right? When we feel stupid, we go, I don't like that, I don't wanna do that, and just quit. But if you take a break and keep coming back, here's the beautiful thing. Yes, it's confusing. That's why they pay us so much, right? If you learn how to do this, people will pay you a lot of money because they don't know how to do it, and it's a whole different level of negotiating a salary because this is a valuable skill that there are people out there paying good money for people who are actually good at angular so if you not only learn angular but you actually get good at it and get confident with it to where you come like this is why in angular nation that people who have been showing up for our events for a while right then they start doing talks and they start getting and they start getting more confidence they get jobs because there are people coming to me all the time going hey bonnie can we hire you and i'm like no but i can help you find somebody who's good. And then we have this, you know, we've known them for a while. And then people say, Hey, Bonnie, I'm looking for a job. And I'm like, okay. And I put them on a list and it's, and it's just this whole, you know, it really helps. But this is the thing is, it, I think the first year is the hardest because it is, um, it's confusing and it's overwhelming. And when you first start learning, it's like, you have to learn everything. And after you've learned for a while, I do a new project and I have to go look something up, but I've already learned the basics, right. And learning the basics just feels like there's so it just like I really felt like I just wasn't smart enough in the beginning. Right. And that's not the case because I know a lot of programmers and some of them are very smart and some of them are not as smart. And it's not about that. I think it's not about how smart you are. It's about how stubborn you are. And it's also about having a support system and being able to go somewhere and ask questions because I got stuck for three weeks one time and I didn't know the answer. And I didn't like I don't I don't have anybody to ask. Right. So I think that's part of it. Stubborn, really. And that's the thing is, if you know Yes, it's hard. That's why they pay us so much. And you just like, that's what I kept telling myself every time I got discouraged. Like, I can't do this. And I'm like, but if I can figure this out, they'll pay me way more money. And it really did help my life to have more money. Um, I mean, all of us need more money. So if you just think of it that way, if you're like, listen, if I could do this, they're going to pay me really good money. And that, that's a big motivation right there. And this is really why I love teaching because like I said, I didn't learn to do this until I was like 35. So I, I was broke. I was working my ass off. Can I say I, I was working really hard and I wasn't making very good money. Right. And it was really and I was trying to raise my kids and trying to and it was hard. So once I started making more money, 
then, and I did, I did a lot of mentoring. Um, I've worked with a lot of junior developers. I've mentored a lot of people because it makes me so happy to sit. Like I, I, I meet somebody who's a junior developer and they're not making very much money. And then I start training them and mentoring them and helping them and answer their questions. And next thing you know, I call them up and go, Hey, I know somebody who's looking for a senior developer. Come on. And now my friend is making two, three, four times what they were making. That's so, it doesn't cost me any money. And I love that. It's just, it's very heartwarming. You know, the world's a crappy place sometimes. And it makes me really happy to be able to do that for people. And once they get a new job like that, once they get those skills, then they don't even need me anymore. And they're like now buying a new car. And it's good to see. I love it. So I really want to try. And it's, it's hard because there's only so much time I have. And I, I did so much mentoring one on one that there's I can only mentor like one or two developers, you know, a year or whatever, because I because we're always meeting one on one. So I'm really trying to take the advice because I'm telling them all the same thing, right? So I try to take that advice and try to learn to scale it more so that I can help more people. And you know what else? Can I tell you something else that I've seen that's probably something that a lot of people are struggling with? If you're watching this, maybe you've noticed um, in the US and EU, the salaries are much higher, right? But, and now everybody's working remote. So this should be great. But then there's also racism. And there's also, even if you have all these skills, if you're in another country, if you're outside of US or EU, they don't want to pay you less because of where you live. And um, I've had people say that I'm not getting responses because my name sounds like I come from, an, you know, it's, it's like they want all the names to sound the same. They want all the people from the same place. And I really don't have any patience for that. Like, I really like it's. I really try to argue against that. Um, I had somebody reach out to me who was in Texas and he's looking for a developer in Texas. He wants to hire somebody in Texas. And I was like, why are you working remote? And he was like, yeah. And I'm like, why, why do you need somebody in Texas? He's like, well, that's the company policy. And so I said, well, go and argue with them and tell them you have so many options, so many great developers that need a, 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 you know, an opportunity that just needs somebody to take a chance on them. And he actually did take a chance and hire somebody from Nigeria who is amazing. And he's been working out so well, they changed the company policy. Like that's the kind of thing that we need to see, you know, because it's not about if you're a minority, if you're a woman, if you're, you know, gay, lesbian, and like, it's not about that. It's about, do you know how to write the code? If you can get the code working, you know, that's what's important. So you have a website about uh, Angular. So what is it about? AngularNation.net? Yeah. Uh, it's basically, uh, it's a community. It's, it's, it's like I wanted, um, I wanted to have a place where people could collaborate and kind of come together. It's free. We have like premium training. We have some premium events, but you can join for free. And there's a lot of free, basically like community meetups um, where people are talking. We started out talking only about Angular, but to be honest, we really expand into other topics because um, we're very passionate about Angular, but we're, we're talking about GraphQL. We're talking about .NET. There's other things in our ecosystem that are all related. So it's not just about Angular anymore. I thought about rebranding and calling it something else, but they got mad. They were like, no, we love Angular. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> can I tell you a story? Do we have time? Can I tell you a story about, yeah. because, because this is, because we're talking about diversity and code. And I think code is a great equalizer because um, especially when you're talking about beginners, right. Um, and kind of being taken seriously, I think is something that I struggled with in the beginning. It was very discouraging to get anyone to respect me as a developer or for me to, because I didn't have a lot of confidence. Um, and, but as I learned more and more about the code, because I was like, I really like coding, right? It was fun to solve these problems and get it working. And it was all that struggle. But um, I remember being in a meeting once, this is a story I want to tell you, it's a short story though. I was in a meeting once and we we're talking about code and I was like a, you know, contractor and I'm talking and all these people have more seniority than me. And I'm like, not an important person in this meeting, but I had, I had an idea of what we were talking about, a solution to the problem. And one of the guys in the meeting basically was like, uh, no, we do not need. And he just said something to me. I don't remember what he, it was years ago, but it was very rude. And I was embarrassed because he just basically was like, how dare you speak? Right. And I was just like, and I was mad. And I went home and I told my husband at the time, um, I like, I, like I should have stood up for myself in the meeting because he was so like, I felt really disrespected and, embarrassed and I was mad. Right. 
he embarrassed me, you know? Um, and I was like, I don't know what I should do if that happens again. And he, and my husband of course was like, he's a big guy. And he's like, Oh, I would have just told him off in the meeting. And I was like, well, they would fire me for that. I can't, I can't do anything. I just basically people push me around. If you've ever been pushed around, I don't know if you've ever been pushed around in a meeting, but a lot of people I know can relate to that. So anyway, um, it was a good job. So I didn't say anything. I just didn't stand up for myself. I didn't do anything. I just left him alone. And then a few weeks later, that guy, that same guy, Cy, he comes to me and he says, hey, my boss wants me to copy the feature that you built and I don't know how. Can I have a copy of your code? Like he needs my help. He can't figure out how to build something that I built and he's coming to me to ask me for help. And I'm just imagining, of course, I was very professional. I was very gracious. This was before GitHub. So I had to send him a copy. I had to like email him, I, you know, but I was uh, like, first of all, like it, it had to have been hard for him, but his boss told him that he had to do it and, he, and then he had to come to me. And then, and then a week later, the same guy comes to me and he says, even though now I've shared, literally I sent him my code, he can't figure out how to get it working and he needs my help in implementing the code. And I was just like, so after, and I, you know, of course I was professional and of course I helped him, but it really helped my confidence a lot. And it really helped me realize that even because there were a couple times over the years when there were people who were disrespectful to me, even after I was an expert, like I'm a GDE, the Angular team says I'm an expert and people still wouldn't listen to me. But after I worked with them for a while, I earned their respect and it took time. And some people would not trust me, but after they knew me for a while, they did. And so as I, as that happened over and over again, it was easier for me to not get so upset and get so emotional because people were just, because I knew I'm like, okay, I, I'm just going to wait. And then you're going to, and then people would figure out like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. And they would come and ask me for help and they would treat me with a lot more respect. So if you're young and you're just getting started, or maybe you're not young, I was not young, right? I was like 35. If you're just getting started and people are not treating you with respect um, <clears throat> and it's frustrating, if you learn, if you keep learning and you keep just go and learn more, like you're, you're going to get the last laugh. Trust me. That's my story. Awesome. So how your uh, consulting job helped you to become uh, and uh, be a good trainer? Oh, because I saw everything that people were doing wrong. Really? <clears throat> if you ever, I think a lot of junior developers, um, when they first start out, they're fixing bugs and maintaining someone else's code. There's a lot of legacy code out there. And when I started out, I was working on somebody. I was always working on some code that somebody else wrote. And I'm trying to like reverse engineer and figure it out backwards. And like, I remember working on a, a database and the table names were like TF32 4B27. What the hell does that mean? Just say customer names. Like why, what product info, why does it say like all this crazy stuff? And so I really, one of the biggest things that I tried to always do as a developer from the beginning was make my functions and my variable names super obvious. Like I want to, I want somebody else coming along behind me to be able to read my code um, and have it easy and I don't want it to be confusing. So I really try to make it very clean. And it was a lot of things when I started training, um, when I when I was supervising developers that worked for me and I would pair program with them. And sometimes like they'll write something and then I'll take it and like rewrite it and make it cleaner and then show it to them. And then I share my screen and just stop talking and say, can you tell me what you think this code does? Can you just read it and tell me? And then they read it and they're like, oh, this makes so much, I didn't know you could do that. And they get all excited. And then that to me, I think is a good way to teach. So what are the common mistakes that uh, most of uh, the trainees that you train do? Um, you mean for, with Angular specifically or just yeah. like training students in general? Uh, Angular specifically. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Well, the number one thing is probably just making the apps too big. So what we really want is to break the, like if you have a big pay, a home page with all this functionality and you have like a component with like 1800 lines of code, that actually should be a parent component with multiple child components, right? So the biggest thing that we see with Angular is, and just 
they make massive, massive files. Um, so that's the big thing. The other thing, <clears throat> really Angular, Angular is beautiful because it allows you to make dynamic components on the fly, but it can be a little, like if you don't really know Angular very well, it's a little bit hard to, sometimes to get it working to like this one time. So it's like all these moving parts and it gets more complicated as, as you go, right? But this is really the beauty of Angular because um, because you can render something on the fly and like you don't know what this variable will be. Once you know it, then you render it and it just all goes, you know, this is really where the beauty is. But what I find a lot is that a lot of people are not using this dynamic functionality of Angular because it's a, it's a little bit more advanced. And so what they do is they make an Angular project and then they just hard code. Everything's like hard coded HTML all over the place. And, and that's really like they're, they just kind of get to where they can do their job and they don't continue learning. And even if you know how to do it, but you continue, there's like so much more functionality that people aren't learning because probably because it's a little bit overwhelmed. And that's why I try to focus on like, what are you working on right now? Let's talk about that rather than let me teach you everything because that's a lot for anybody. And I think if you learn one piece at a time and just say like, what are you doing right now? And let's focus on what you're doing and let's teach you one thing today. Then people feel like it's a cheat, like this, like I can handle this, you know, I got this instead of feeling overwhelmed all the time. I think it's really the more relationship. If we build the relationship um, and you have that support system, then it is like I tell, I told people when I was consulting, when even when I was still working as a developer, like I don't know everything there is to know about Angular. I'm not going to tell you that I do, but I know the people who write it and I know all of the other people. So like I have all these friends and I, and I can call, call them and ask questions every time I get stuck. That was really powerful for me. Just being, feeling comfortable asking questions and saying, I have a friend and I can ask my friend a question that, and then I want to be that friend for people. And not just me, because I can't ask, I can't help everybody. So that's why we have the community and we have other experts too that are super nice and friendly. So you're very good. You're very uh, good in understanding uh, the deep knowledge about the Angular. And also you're very good in communicating and uh, uh, making uh, your trainees to understand how to learn, how to become uh, experts in it. How you are able to have uh, these two qualities in you, uh, a trainer in you and uh, also a coder. Um, that's probably the mom because I'm a mom too, and I was teaching my daughter how to code. Uh, and then we, and this is a whole other story. We're running out of time, but um, we found out she was dyslexic. I don't know. Do you know about dyslexia? I didn't really know anything about dyslexia, um, but we found out she was dyslexic, and that really changed because some people really, it's very difficult to just read the docs, and especially on more abstract, complex concepts. Not everybody can learn like that. Like 10% of the people can't. Like they need to have a teacher or they need to have like an example or, you know, a drawing or some picture or video or something. Um, and even the other people who are not dyslexic actually still benefit from having a drawing or like a, some type of visual or a diagram or a explanation beyond just a wall of text because the wall of text it's hard. And so really it's about breaking things down into simple concepts and explaining it in a simple way without using a bunch of big, new, complicated words. And a lot of people, a lot of the trainers out there that are using Angular, that are training with Angular are just like, you're, they're just going to show you the VS code and say, this is the code, this is what it looks like. And they're going really fast and it's very overwhelming and confusing. And sometimes people don't even really know what question to ask at all. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And really just trying to slow it down and say, like, let's Let's make it simpler because it is complicated. But if you if you if you can understand these concepts one at a time, you can actually build more advanced concepts and then understand more and get into more like architecture. Then that's that's a career, career advancement. If you can actually understand kind of the big picture of how it all works together, um, and you can't really do that if you're overwhelmed. So I think just trying to take the lessons and simplify them. Like, like, like when I said the big problem, everybody's apps are too big, right? Very simple. Or if you write this code, and you don't know what you're doing. It's going to end up very slow. So we need to, these are the things that you need to do to make sure that you don't end up with very slow code. And then we have pictures to show like how it works. And I do a lot of um, like, I'll just bring up a, a little example in stack blitz and share my screen. And then we talk about it in office hours and they say, well, what, what happens if you do this? And I'm like, well, let's try it right now. 
and that, and then it sticks in their brain forever because they understand. And it's like, okay, now I understand. I'm never going to forget that. At least that's my you goal. Awesome. So you train online? Yes. So, I stopped uh, traveling with COVID. I, I haven't gone. I haven't left my house. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that COVID goes away, but I'm really uh, trying to, because I just really, you know, want everybody to be safe. And so um, we just do everything online and all of Angular. I, I didn't know about COVID, Sai. When I started Angular Nation, it was um, actually almost exactly two years ago. It was January of 2020. COVID wasn't even a thing when I started Angular Nation. But I think really um, it's been nice because we have, we st- like the first class, um, the architect training lasted four weeks. Now it lasts six weeks because we've added to it. Um, but the first, at the end of the first, we we were we were meeting every week together for a month, and we kind of bonded. It was like in the beginning of COVID, and so everybody was sad to say goodbye because we were meeting every week, and we all were became friends. So we started uh, Friday Social. So we meet every Friday night. We have no topic. We have no guest speaker. We're just hanging out. We bring beer. And we've been doing that for like over a year. Every Friday, we just hang out and we socialize. It's a bunch of nerdy developers. And sometimes we answer questions and sometimes we just hang out and talk. And it's been really nice. It's been lovely. And we've all became friends. So what are the things, uh, what are the big things that are uh, being created using Angular in the world, in in the internet? Oh my goodness, tons. There are huge, huge companies. A lot of intranets, a lot of company intranets um, are run on Angular. A lot of big companies are using Angular. Uh, and I think React is probably more popular because it's very easy to learn and get started with. And Angular is more complex. But the big companies, like they are, you know, making a commitment to Angular and then um, they really need experts. So it might be harder to find an Angular job. I, I don't know if it is or not, but it's. I feel like it probably is harder to find a job. But then when you do find a job, it's going to pay more because it's harder to find Angular experts because Angular is, so you kind of have to be stubborn a little bit, but I think it's good. Like there are so many React jobs, but there are so many React developers. Uh, Whereas with Angular, you can actually get into an architect position. Um, I mean, I I don't know how long it would take, but it just depends on how stubborn you are and how supportive you are. But I would definitely say if anybody's thinking about learning Angular or using Angular or trying to use Angular, just come hang with us on Angular Nation. And uh, we'll help. We also have, because you know I do premium training because the training's not free, right? But we also do um, uh, scholarships. And I've done a lot of scholarships. Um, the guy that I mentored out of Nigeria started out as a scholarship and now he has an amazing job. I've had a couple of scholarships that come in and they get free training and then they get a job and then they come back and pay for the next scholarship. Um, just, it's just, it's really nice. So if you are in... Um, you know, uh, India or South Asia or Nigeria or um, Argentina or anywhere that the currency is not strong against the U.S. dollar, then just reach out because I'm trying, like, I really, I want to be able to help people. And I've met some amazing people that just needed an opportunity. And, and I'm it's like, it's hard because I can't help everybody for free. Right. But I at least try to have a possibility. Um, so I did a, a Baker's Dozen, um, basically for every 12 people that pay, one person comes in completely for free from the diversity scholarships. And we also have AG Grid. I don't know if you know AG Grid, but AG Grid has also come in and help with more scholarships and, um, you know, sliding scales for diversity. So if it's if you come in and like you want this training, you need this training and it's too much money, then there are things like I'm trying to as much as possible. Um, but now we have like 3,500 people. So it's just me, right? I'm trying, like, I can't help everybody, but, um, but we really do care about diversity because I was, you know, nobody would take me seriously. I was just a woman and I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and I know what that's like. So I've met some really amazing, talented, very smart, cool people from all over the world. So I really don't care where you're from. I think that anybody should have an opportunity because I've met some amazing people from everywhere. And I know that not everybody like there are a lot of racists out there, but we can't speak for them. We could just say that's not okay. That's not okay. But this is the thing in Angular Nation is I'm really trying to, you know, to have that. Like if we, we had a mentoring program and one of the things I asked was if you're going to be a mentor, are you comfortable mentoring somebody from another country or somebody who's gay or lesbian or, you know, transgender or a different race or whatever? 
Um, and if you're not like, we don't want you mentoring anybody really just like, there's no, I'm, I have no patience for that anymore. Not that I had patience for it to begin with, but I've gotten more outspoken about that. And I don't tolerate any kind of, this is another thing when we have all the community channels, we actually have an angular South Asia channel who is, we have hosts from, um, our lead host is from India and we have an APAC channel and our host is from Hong Kong. So I'm trying to like have leadership from these other countries too, and not just have, you know, all of the experts up there because I want to have new experts that are from everywhere. And we also have been helping people like get GDEs and stuff like that. So if you are from anywhere in the world and uh, just getting started or if even, you know, whatever, it's just, we all try to support each other. And the thing that stands out to me, I don't care where you're from. I don't care how old you are, or what you look like. The thing that I notice the most is the people who are asking really good questions, the people who are helping the people like there's beginners who are trying to help other beginners and they might not know but I love them because they're trying to help and they're figuring out and then the beginners are figuring it out together. And if they can't, then one of the other people that it's just like everybody, like I just love the people who are nice and supportive and helpful and the, and the people who are coming in learning. Um, and really like you, like you reached out to me on Twitter. I don't know who you are. I never heard of you before. Right. But you were very polite and you were very nice. And like that, I mean, that's all we ask. That's the, the, the number one rule on angular nation. Just be nice. That's it. It's very simple. And people have been really good about it. I've, I've been so impressed and, and, and happy about how nice people are. It's lovely. So I uh, I did master's in software engineering. How, uh, if I want to learn uh, Angular from you, so how you'll teach me? Uh, I, well, it's actually much better um, now with Angular 2. Angular JS was kind of a mess, but with Angular, I would just put you in uh, architect training. I spent a bunch of time putting like the most important things to get you started. Um, so that I, that's where I, I had started to break it out into like there's architect training and there's an, there's an RxJS course and there's this course. And like I was going to have several different courses and I decided not to because I really want to keep one course. And I just want to keep actually shy. My friend shy that does another course. He told me that um, to just keep on improving it and adding to it and, and um, making it better and better. But I would just I, like this is the most important stuff that I want everybody to learn. Um, and I just try to put it all in one place so that I can teach more people faster. Because remember, that's why I left consulting, because I was teaching people. But I'm basically only teaching two developers at a time. And it was very slow. And uh, I kept seeing these mistakes. So I really try to send everybody to um, training, which actually I'm going to start again in the next couple of weeks. I'm opening registration. So if you want to come and join us, you can come and join us. I'm going to open, I think uh, the last week in January, we're going to run and we run live in small groups. So I have videos, but we're, but then we have office. So you watch the video and then you come into office hours live and ask questions. It's super fun. So uh, I'll put your uh, links, uh, web links in the description of this video. People who find our video on YouTube can see the work that you're doing and if you, uh, 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 they can join uh, through the links. I really appreciate that because that's been the biggest thing is like, I haven't been doing this very long and I, the students who have come through training love it, but um, not a lot of people know about us yet. So I really appreciate you sharing us with your audience and I'm going to run. So what today is January 6th. I'm going to run it the last week of January, but I run, but I'm going to run it again. So if anybody watches this after January is over, um, we're going to keep running it again and we're going to keep improving it and keep doing it. And we're just growing like angular nation has been here for two years, but it's growing more and more and we have a lot of fun things planned so we'll keep going so maybe we'll check in again uh next year and see how things have changed and if you want to come and learn about angular you should come and join i would love to have you Sai. definitely <laughs> definitely you know if you're a trainer definitely i want to join all right well cool <laughs> so what do you well, say thank about you this? very much what huh? do you say about this conversation about what this conversation say it one more time uh, what do you say about this conversation? Oh, this conversation. This conversation was fun. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm really glad that you reached out to me. I liked uh, being on your channel, and, and I think you asked great questions. I hope I didn't go on talking too much, but uh, lots of stories to share. I think really that just how I learned, you know, I really like in, encouraging people because I think um, the biggest thing that I see that I, that I hope people watching is like there are so many people who just don't really want to give um, beginners a chance. And it's very discouraging to feel like, you know, nobody's going to take you seriously and you don't really feel that confident to know what you're doing. And it's hard to get from there to like actually having a good job. 
but having a good job and having that salary coming in really is life changing for people. And so I really try. Um, but the biggest thing I would say, the biggest takeaway is I can't teach people unless they have the passion. If they're coming to me and they're doing all the work, then they have questions. But if they just sit there and say, teach me, I can't, right? I can't, but you have to care and you have to like put in the work and the energy and the initiative and then it happens and then it's beautiful. So if you have the initiative and the passion and you're super excited about learning and you are willing to do the work, come find me. It'll be great. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, as a trainer, as an angular trainer, uh, what do you say about uh, me talking with different country people and who are into different professions, especially who are into technology, like who are, great, who are experts like you, who are into uh, our technology uh, as a as a as a tech as a person who is into our technology uh, what i'm going to learn from this and what people are going to watch from the videos of mine on youtube i really think um i i love the way you just go and approach the people that you want to talk to i think that, i think they should learn from you like what you're doing you're just go you just came to me and said bonnie can i interview you and i was like yeah and i think really that that is um that they should be more like you because you're very you're very respectful and very nice and just like hey i want to get to know you and i want to ask you questions and it, and it's like you could do that with anybody if you just just like just just do what i did right just you're very nice and you just say hey i have questions um one thing sometimes people just send me a message and they just say hello and they don't tell me what they want and a lot of people do that and they don't really get a response but you actually said hello this is what i want Will you will you do this with me? And it was perfect. And so I think what they should learn is really to be more like you and just go and ask people questions and be nice. Because if you're trying to learn, if you're worried that like what I'm going to say no to you, like, you know, I could say, oh, I'm not going to talk to you. I don't know you. You're not important. Like maybe that would happen. But if you were if you like if you worry that it, that somebody might reject you or somebody might be mean to you or whatever, then you don't take that chance and you don't have these opportunities like be like Sai. Uh, and also, I'll put uh, your uh, website link uh, on the screen. People who fans our video can see uh, a anywhere in the social media or internet and uh, or podcast. I mean, uh, on on uh, on internet can 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 see the work that you're doing and can can able to learn from you. Absolutely, and we also have a YouTube channel. I'm doing a lot of. If you look for me on YouTube, or and and really, I think the best thing is come to Angular Nation and ask questions. Um, because there are a lot of things, there are a lot of topics that I've taught about, and there's a lot of videos out there. And really, rather than trying to learn everything, really, it's like if you just come and talk to, not just me, there's other people there that can help too. But if you just come and make a post and just say like, what, I'm, I'm looking for a job, or I'm just starting, I need to learn first before I can get a job. Like there are some people who are hiring junior developers. Like that's a thing. Did you know that you could get a job as a remote junior developer? Like that's the kind of thing, right? So um, it's really just, you have to say what you need. You have to say what you want and go after it and go and tell people like, I'm looking for a job or I would like to do this or I would like to do that. And then, and then people, and, and it's not like you're just gonna snap your fingers and get a job, but they're like, based on what you're looking for, I can tell you like, if you, if you don't really have a great resume, but you want a job and you want somebody to give you a chance, you could actually do a technical talk with a demo. Show us what you can do and let people see you explaining the code and then send a link with your CV, right? Little things like that that we can do or if you start showing up for community events and you ask a lot of really good questions and you didn't know that the hiring manager was in that call, now wants to hire you. Like that's the thing that we're seeing on Angular Nation and it's just, you know, it's a beautiful thing. So you just have to come and you have to say what you want. So anybody from any part of the world uh, and uh, who are into any profession or who has any background, who are into any age group can join you. You just need an uh, email address. Yeah. yeah. You go to angularnation.net, you put in your email address. There are questions um, like how much experience do you have with Angular? But I'm just curious, it's not required. I just wanna know like if you're a beginner or expert or whatever, um, you can answer the questions if you want, but really all that's required is an email address. Awesome. And so, most of us use our real names just because we're like, we're really nice people and we turn our cameras on and so, but uh, yeah, just an email address. Wonderful. I hope uh, because of you, a lot of people will get affected uh, positively and, uh, uh, and I'm sure you'll be the reason for a lot of people's smile. I'll let you know. Uh, 
uh, there's a place that says, where did you hear about us? And you could just say Smart Cherry Podcast. I'll be like, ah, <laughs> thank you, Sai. <laughs> Great. So definitely people who watches this and uh, listens to you will do that. And uh, I hope you will do some extra thing for them. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Thank you. Thank you, Vani, for giving me your valuable time and uh, 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 explaining about your work and answering some of my questions. It was great. Thank you for having me on your show. It was really fun. Can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have a YouTube channel too. They can come and find us both. And well, if they're Angular developers, but yeah, I love your YouTube channel. And also, can I put this audio and video clip on my podcast website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Keep going. Keep doing what you love. Thank you so much. Well, keep in touch. We'll check in every once in a while and see how things are going. And maybe I'll see you in architect training. Definitely. I'll join you someday. All right. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Bye.